and welcome back to the channel for the final part of my uh, test of this wonderful little radio the 8778UV from Anytone uh, we're going to pop the programming cable into the radio here and just quickly whiz through the software side I'll put links in the description to where you can get the software from the first thing that you can do uh, is actually read how the radio is set up um, it is possible to wideband this radio you can actually select the actual frequency range that you want from this little drop down that way you can actually uh, pass this radio to uh, uh, a new amateur to make sure that they don't transmit out of band um, so there's links to this on the Anytone website where you can download this so you can essentially wideband this if you if you if you want obviously you've got to be very very careful because you can transmit out of band particularly on the PMR channels where you can put 25 watts up the stick if you really wanted to um, anyway here we go into the main uh, program it's pretty much your standard fare for what you'll find on most of this type of programming software Um, this is a real-time reading of the data from the radio there now on the uh, Anytone software of their site it failed I kept getting that warning up so I had to download some alternative software actually from a Russian <laughs> source uh, but it actually seems okay so the actual Anytone maybe is a firmware issue between the two but the original one from the Anytone site didn't work so if don't get the don't get it from there get it from the link that I, I put up below in the description um, you can as you can see here it's fully configurable you can change the welcome message I put my call sign in there uh, you can change the, the display brightness the direction of the screen so if you want to mount the radio upside down for whatever reason as we already saw in the other video you can do that um, you can the beat volume you've got all of the settings that you could really want to change uh, here it's um, I'll, I'll show you a little bit later on that you can change a lot of this in the actual functions menu on the radio as well so if you don't want to uh, use a programming cable and go in and do this you can actually do pretty much most of this on the radio front itself through the menu through the menu options um, but uh, I think for most of us we uh, we're all okay with uh, using these cables now and, uh, and software as we've gone on um, yeah you can change the key assignments on the fist mic which is something that I showed in the other video again you can change what options you want on the fist mic I just kept it as the default options or that no I actually did tweak it a little bit um, again here it shows you the frequency ranges enabled on this radio at this point in time I've wide banded this for testing purposes only but I shall be putting it back to uh, the standard settings once I finish testing um, yeah I mean it's you know these this software once you've used kind of one set of software they're also very similar um, the one thing that you will see when you load in the standard frequencies on this radio is that, that you definitely shouldn't use them now what I've done here for testing is just put in a, a, a repeater settings and then a full set of um, PMR settings just for testing and uh, I've, uh, I've, I'll be testing the local repeater uh, well, I say local repeater it's the, 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 the one of them is over 20 miles away uh, I'll be testing that a little bit later on in the video but you can you can do all that very quick setting up the repeater uh, functions through the software you can also edit this on the actual radio itself so you can actually edit each channel individually it's very easy to edit on the radio as well so uh, in terms of um, editing it's actually really really good because the radio is very easy to edit on and the the software is also very very easy to to use in that regard um, right okay that's real time as well so that hasn't been sped up it's important because some of the radios are very slow for some reason anyway we're going to uh, we're going to wrap this up uh, on the programming side of it because I, I, know, I know these bits can be a bit tedious we're just going to go over to me fumbling uh, with the radio in the studio and uh, you can have a little look at that and uh, and see if it's of any help or see if it gives you a good idea of whether you you think this radio is suitable for you or not so uh, let's go over to me right okay we're going to try and access our local repeater which should be very very easy let's uh, change the power level we can probably access it on mid power easily I would think uh, this repeater is about 25 miles away from here um, should be getting quite a strong signal from the repeater here ready there it is off the scale reason for that is it's just there isn't it it's 
only just there. It's quite near. GB3VA in Aylesbury. So let's see if we can access this repeater. This is G7 LANK checking access into GB3VA. There we go, we got a fairly good signal back from the repeater. That's uh, to be expected. Well, that just proves that that's programmed in okay. We'll put another shout out. The other day we actually did get somebody come back to us on the repeater, so that was quite good. It's G7LNK, G7LNK, checking access into GB3VA. There we go. So around the edge of the display there are the buttons P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6 and they they relate to each box that you see down the side there and those boxes are changed by pressing the function button which is top right just up here there, the function button. Pressing the function button will actually change what they do. There's just two, there's two sets that you can change and you can change that in software what, what each one does. Okay, so if you leave it on the first one, I mean it's not complicated. This this is all fairly fairly straightforward. Um, yeah, so P1 A B that naturally pressing that selects between your two VFOs at main A and main B. Um, so obviously the bigger writing that's the one that's in your main display, but it does still monitor the the other one, so it's dual watch. Um, v and M, that's obviously um, the VFO and the memory, so that switches between the VFO and the memory. Um, monitor, fairly obvious what that does, just drops the squelch. RDW, on or off, that's off. So squelch, yeah, that's you can just just you just enable the squelch like that and then turn the dial to change whatever setting you want on the squelch okay uh, and then the same with volume you just push the volume button and turn the dial to whatever volume you want and you can you can do all this off of the the main uh, um, you can program the side buttons on on the mic to do some of these functions as well so you you haven't got to just go for the radio, particularly if you want to mount this out of the way down the side of your seat or something like that. Um, so changing the function mode, you can change the orientation of the display. Right, okay, so yeah, that's fine. You, you can flip the display around. SFT, that's your shift, your repeater shift. So you can, no offset, that's set to plus, so that's right. Um, Scan function, so that'll just scan through all your, your vans. Um, power levels, obviously low, mid and high. CDT, off and on. And then your band, mid, wide, narrow, okay. And that's it. And you can change these functions and what they do uh, on the drop downs in the software. Um, so it's fairly self explanatory. So now just scrolling on the up and the down keys on the, I can't squeeze the microphone in there, but the, the up and the down keys are on the edge of the microphone. You just see them in the top shot. And then that lets you go up and down the channels. That's the uh, speed of the scanning. There you go. That's it scanning. They're not the fastest, not the slowest either. Reasonable. Push and hold the function button. And get you into the menu. And then if you push the main button in, then you can get into the function menu. And this will change the overall settings of the radio. And that function 10 there, that's for the dual display, dual watch. And then you press the back button, it's the P3, it's the P3 button there for going back. 
can't remember already back. So we've got the dual watch on here anyway. But yeah, that's just push and hold function. And it gets you into this and you can change like the hand key settings. But you can do that in the software anyway, but you can change with the selection buttons on the hand key from there as well. So yeah. It's but to be honest, if you've got the software, you, you're just going to do it all through the software, one would think. I've been using this now just locally, just to chat to Mick, and I'll just sort of show you how hot it can get. Now, touching the top of it, it does feel quite warm. I've been having some long overs, I've been running it on really high power as well, and that you wouldn't want to hold on to that for more than a couple of minutes. It feels quite warm. And if we get this, I've got this digital thermometer. We turn this on and get that into focus, and we'll just blip the top of it. It's 56.5 degrees, and the back of it was there. It was even hotter. It got up to got up to 60 degrees on the back there earlier when we had it in high power mode. So that's something to bear in mind. They, these do actually run quite hot. I mean, basically the unit is a heat sink, isn't it? Look, so um, you know, don't put it under your seat. <laughs> so yeah it does get quite warm but then they all do don't they the, basically the radio is a heat sink right and not closed in then I think it'll probably be alright but it's uh, like you say it's, it costs uh... let's record this right so we've had the little fan running this little USB fan for a little while and let's drop the temperature down now, let's get the laser on it to 32.9 degrees, so that's good. So if you do have one of these and you're a bit of a rag chewer like I've just been all night, just get a cheap little fan on it, that's a little battery powered one, and bingo, in no time it just brings the temperature right down. Lovely job. Right, in summary, all I can say this is a fantastic radio. I really, really recommend this. This is one of the best Chinese radios that I've tested so far on the channel. Uh, for the money, I got this for £80. If you shop about, you get it cheaper. Prices do go up and down, but I thoroughly recommend this for a base, mobile, or even a portable radio. It's, uh, it's powerful. The power output does exactly what it says in the tin. Just go buy one. Right, all that remains for me to say is have a wonderful Christmas and a really really good new year thank you ever so much for your support over the this year and previously if you've been a long time subscriber i really really do appreciate all the support and the views and the likes and even the dislikes um so thanks ever so much for that and uh, i look forward to uh, providing you with some more content in the new year we're going to cover lots more we've got some nice toys coming for christmas and uh, a couple of donations from some suppliers so that's really really great so uh, we're going to have fun in the new year so you have a great christmas i hope uh, you get all that you want and deserve and uh, you have a brilliant new year we'll see you on in 2019 thanks for watching